It's likely you've heard of the placebo effect before. Sugar pills, sham surgeries. Essentially, a placebo is supposed to serve as a way to control for the effects of an actual pharmaceutical or treatment. Most of us dismiss the placebo effect as unuseful to us in our daily lives. That's where we get it wrong. The story that our brain tells us is happening is incredibly powerful. In this video, I'll review three of my favorite placebo studies to demonstrate just how powerful the stories we tell ourselves can be and how we can begin to harness the power of placebos in our own lives. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and bell now to be notified every time I post a new video about how to lead and live a more authentic, fearless life. As a PhD in stress physiology and evolution in human behavior, I've dedicated my professional career to helping people rewire their thinking to better serve them. And I've spent my fair share of time doing research. So even I was shocked by the power of a few placebo studies, and now I use them today to help people change the way they behave by first changing the way they think, using placebos and stories that our brain tells us to be true. In no particular order, here are my three favorite placebo-based studies. Study number one. In 2007, a group out of Harvard University tested how mindset affects several health variables in a group of 84 housekeepers. Here's the setup. One group was told nothing. The other group of housekeepers was simply told. Hey, do you know that when you're cleaning, you're actually meeting the Surgeon General's requirement for exercise? That was the only difference between the two groups. They all wore those nifty nifty wristwatches which tracked exertion level, heart rate, all of that is factored out of the analysis. And yet, after four weeks time, a massive difference was seen between the two groups. The group that was simply told they were meeting the Surgeon General's requirement for exercise had lower weight, lower blood pressure, lower body fat, lower waist to hip ratio, and a lower body mass index. You're an athlete. Study number two. This one is an oldie but a goodie. In 1967 in Japan, researchers took subjects who were hypersensitive to the leaves of the Japanese liqueur trees. Think the equivalent of poison ivy. In the first setup, the researchers rubbed the arms of these subjects with a maple leaf. Totally harmless. But they told participants that they were touching them with the poison leaves. 100% of the participants broke out in the same rash as if they'd been touched by the poison leaf. Then the reverse condition was tested in which participants were actually rubbed with the poisonous leaves, but they were told that the leaf was harmless. In this condition, only 15% showed any skin reaction. Wild. What story are you telling yourself that might be impacting you more than you recognize? Maybe it's about a weight or a skin condition, just like the examples I just gave in the previous two studies or something else entirely. Comment below the story you think you need to change based on this research about how powerful the stories we tell can be. Study number three. Okay, so this one isn't technically placebo, but I think it's close enough to count. And it's pretty interesting because of its immediate application to our own lives. Neuroscientists at Harvard Medical School had volunteers practice a five-fingered piano exercise for two hours a day for five days. At the end of the five days, the area of the brain in the motor cortex that controlled the finger movements had expanded significantly. More of the brain was being directed and used for these finger movements, which is pretty cool, right? But here's where things get crazy. Another group of volunteers was instructed not to actually play the piano, but to merely think about practicing the piano while they kept their hands still. What a brain scan of this group revealed was that simply thinking about practicing had expanded the same region of the motor cortex in the same way as those who had actually played it. Both groups altered the physical structure and function of their brains, one by actually doing a task and the other simply by visualizing it. So the next time you're dismissive of your thoughts or don't believe that they have power, think back to these three studies. If nothing else, I hope you'll start telling yourself nicer stories. If you could use more help with science-backed solutions to bring more joy into your own life, I'd love to move you into a more confident, authentic space. So reach out to me or check out this new project that my team and I have been working on called The Year of Happy. You can find more information at yearofhappy.com. Thanks for watching. And if you're enjoying this content, I suspect you might enjoy a few of my other videos about positive affirmations and happiness habit building. You can check them out right here. And please do me the favor of subscribing, liking, and sharing these videos with your friends so more people like you can benefit. Until next time, live more happy and fear less.